This is omorganlabs.com. This is Mr. Morgan. I'm going to talk to you about some GD&T tips, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. Basically, the goal of GD&T is to obtain maximum manufacturing tolerances while still maintaining functional requirements. So you want to make parts that are good enough for your application but not impossible to make. So this tip little snippet is about concentricity versus run out. Basically it's kind of tricky because if you have a concentricity call out like the one on the right here you may be thinking one thing but you're actually describing something else. So if you have a concentricity call out as such you could have a circle on top of a circle a circle on top of an oval a circle concentric to a square a circle concentric to a hexagon if that's your design intent and it doesn't matter then go ahead and place a concentricity call out on your feature but if your intent is a circle concentric to another circle you better use run out concentricity the definition the midpoints of all centered diagonals are at the same point so you make a diagonal for in this example the square and you make a diagonal for the circle they should all intersect at the same point they're concentric circular run out how much one deviates from a perfect circle about a specified axis. So you have an axis, in this case it's axis Z. It's pointing to the circumference, but in GDNT that it means your axis. So your circular runout, it affects form, the roundness of it, how round it is, and orientation. That's what makes GDNT so specific. It's not just a dimension. It's a geometric dimension and tolerancing. How circular are you? How triangular are you? I don't think there's a triangular call out. No. There's a profile tolerance. That could be your profile could be like a, a triangular shape and you could have a plus or minus one or two mil or plus or minus one or two inch or whatever profile tolerance. Anyway, main thing is you have form tolerances as well as dimensional tolerances. Okay, here's a another example of circular runout. So, you have a part, you have two cylinders, and you want to keep them concentric and circular. So you have a call out that looks something like this. The runout, you want it to be four mils with respect to surface A and datum axis B. So basically you want to center it on some type of plate here and then you would hold on to this and rotate the part. While you're rotating it you have something called a dial indicator. Okay, This dial indicator has a needle that goes back and forth as you're turning this part. Okay. In this example, as we turn the part, the needle dips in and out minus 3 and plus 1. So if we go over here to this illustration, if we just think of it in reverse as the probe is moving and the part is stationary, you can kind of see it better. Just imagine the probe just revolving around the part like it's kind of orbiting the part. Anyway this dotted line represents the perfect circle and this needle can vary based on the actual shape that you're measuring so at the top of its path the needle digs in a minus two mil deflection deformation or reading and then it comes to the bottom and it comes out two. So it goes out two and it goes in two. So 
you add those together that's four so the total movement is four so in this case we would be within the run out requirement so this is just one arrow so this means that you're taking measurements at different little slices you'll turn it 360 take a measurement and then you'll move this dial indicator over and then you'll take another reading another and another and you'll kind of build up little slices like a loaf of bread so the difference between the two slices you're not actually cutting the part it's this is just how you're measuring it you're just measuring different little sections so if you have one arrow that just means that the taper isn't controlled your total run out would do that so in each reading that you would get here you would not compare the readings for each section each section stands on its own I'll go into a little bit more detail in another video on total run out because that kinda gets confusing I don't know if I explained that very well but on the more run out so I said run out controls orientation so here you can see your dial indicator moving revolving in a perfect circle and the needle going in and out and basically the red is a hypothetical perfect circle but it's off center so you run out your dial indicator would pick that up as you spin about axis A because this is the call out 6 mil run out with respect to A so you go and you look at the readings your largest negative reading is 3 your largest plus reading is plus 3 so you add those two together and it's 6 so some people call it FIR full indicated reading 6 mils or total indicated reading 6 mils or full indicated measurement so those are the terms that you may see here again perfect circle but it's a little off center you run out your dial indicator would pick that up and if you just look here you go out to but you don't you don't go in any so your run out would be two and the last is you can have a perfectly centered part perfectly circular part but it could have a defect so here you can see how run out can control form so the red is a perfect circle with this with a little divot a little defect the dial indicator goes around in a perfect circle and the needle goes in and out or actually just it just goes out because it's perfect everywhere else and so the largest deviation is a is two so your run out would be two I don't have the the little control block but that's what that would be a run out of two same thing but reversed you have a protrusion here but everything else is perfect so it goes out two mils so this should be a oh it goes in two mils because it kinda gets shorter so it's a minus so this would satisfy a run out of two so this is how it kinda it controls form as well as location of a circle okay hope you learned something See you later.